Good morning friends and welcome back to another session of our lecture series. Uh, so for today's session, I think I should be starting with factors which affect drug action. Uh, but I was going through the topic and what I thought is, is it's a very big topic to cover it, cover it up in one go. So I thought I should be making uh, a few sessions so that it becomes more meaningful uh, when I am delivering it and it becomes more useful to you when you are listening. Okay, So this is the first of the session. It will be followed by a few more and I will upload it in sequence. Okay, So broadly speaking now about factors which affect the drug response. So you all know that you know when you prescribe drugs to individuals, you are not quite sure about the response, the percentage of response. right? So, for example, there is a patient who has been given uh, 500 milligrams, a normal adult patient, 500 milligrams of paracetamol tablet orally for fever and fever comes down. Okay, this is one scenario. You give the same tablet to some other individual, adult normal individual and he doesn't show any kind of a response. So, there is always going to be uh, the, the variations in response which is seen in between the two individuals, right? So, that is, that is quite common, okay? Drugs which suit me may not suit you. The same drug may not suit you at the same time for the same reason, right? So, this is what is medicine, right? The next scenario is that you give 500 milligrams of paracetamol to an individual and for his fever and the fever comes down now, right? This is one kind of response. You move ahead six months for some other fever, you give paracetamol, 500 milligrams and the fever doesn't come down. So even within the individual at different times, uh, the response achieved might be variable. There would be variations in the response achieved. Right, so there's a lot of variations which you see, and that's what I say. Uh, medicine is not like mathematics. Here we predict the uh, kind of a response, but we are not uh, sure whether the response will come or not. So two plus two is not four in medicine, right? But it is four in mathematics. Even on Earth, even you uh, travel to the edge of the universe, two plus two equals to four except that you are in some other dimension that is another story not going into physics but yes medicine 2 plus 2 never equals to 4 right so that's the thing so drug response is variable and that's what is important thing now there are various reasons why uh, why this variation should come about and those variations uh, what are the factors which uh, bring about this variation that we are going to see in this lecture so the first factor which comes to my mind is about what what should i so many factors the, the best is about the age uh, of an individual right so age is an important factor you have extremes of ages okay so you are very small uh, you have small kids on one side and you are the very old on the other side now let's talk about uh, the very small under 5 age group and so on. Now once a person is born, it's not that on a day one all the organs are functioning optimally. No, they are functioning, there is no physiological or pathological problem. But then it's like an induction motor, like it will take some time for all the organs to work to their maximum capacity. Okay. So happens even with the liver, so happens even with the kidneys, uh, GI motility, absorption, distribution, so on. Don't expect uh, small uh, children on a day one to have, uh, you know, the same amount of plasma proteins as what a normal child will have after one month. No, don't expect that because things will grow. Don't expect uh, premature babies to have the same functioning, no, because the physiological condition is different. All the organs are evolving. So a normal dose given to a normal drug, normal practice drug given at normal doses to these individuals and it can cause a lot of toxic effects onto these children. Okay, so that, that's the issue. That's the issue that we are going to uh, see in our practice. So we need to be sure on what type of drug. So I always say pediatrics is a special case, is a specialty uh, as far as even drugs are concerned because you cannot use whatever drugs you want in children. Okay, because simply you use those drugs and it can just cause a lot of uh, side effects. The drugs may not act also sometimes in those children and so on. So that, that's one issue. A lot of specific side effects are also seen in children which you do not want to see. 
okay for example use tetracyclines and they can cause bone and teeth deformities so don't use them fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin and so on i'm just naming the drugs okay so we do not use it because they can cause a lot of cartilage damage okay ethambutol is an anti tuberculosis drug which can cause optic neuritis uh, so that that's a issue the child may not be able to reveal what's happening with his vision so we try to avoid it be below the age of 6 years right so these factors become limiting uh, steroids or uh, steroids also they can cause a lot of uh, growth retardation in children okay so uh, try to avoid these drugs hormones okay because uh, you know the growing body if you try to disturb it by giving hormones then it can uh, prove to be dangerous right if at all you want to use these drugs you need to counsel individuals on the side effect you want to search for alternatives you want to start with the lowest dose possible keep on monitoring the patients for any side effects and follow up is the only way out so so these all things need to be careful other than that a few side effects are very specific for small age group so gray baby syndrome with broad spectrum antibiotics like chloramphenicol we don't use chloramphenicol that much now that's another story but that can cause a lot of problems with children so specific side effects related to children so that's also becomes a issue it's so it's just not about uh the physiological parameters being different which affect the kinetics and the dynamics is also about the side effect profile which also needs to be taken into consideration when you are practicing in children so that becomes a limiting step now if that was for the uh, under 5 age group uh okay there's one more thing that comes to mind before i stop uh, on pediatrics uh you know after a few after a few months uh, the metabolism of uh, children they that increases okay so the metabolism in fact the basal metabolic rate will be quite high so they will metabolize drugs on a higher note so they might require a higher dose also for certain drugs so remember that once the organs come up to the optimum function the metabolism increases right so bmr for children is much more than what is seen in adults and uh old age group so you need to be aware so slightly high doses of drug for the age and the weight will be needed for certain drugs so so that was one more thing that i missed on that so uh if that was on pediatrics now we come to the other side the extreme of the age that's on the very old age group so as a person grows old Uh, his body functions deteriorates now it's a physiological deterioration it's not to do with a pathological deterioration so uh, kidney functions will go down glomerular filtration rate even to extent i should liver functions don't go down to that much i should say but they get affected blood supply to certain organs decreases right uh, git motility also decreases over a period of time plasma protein bindings might go down because the elderly you grow Uh, the problem is with the nourishment nourishment nutrition and so on so malnourishment can cause a lot of problems and so on okay so that's a issue that's a issue that we are talking of so in normal drugs normal doses in adult human beings and they go well but normal tr- same drugs same dose in elderly can prove to be uh, you know toxic uh, because these all physiological problems and the drug uh, will be free to act and uh, even normal doses will get accumulated and cause a lot of side effect profile in elderly so need to be careful on that don't try to administer drugs which are hepatotoxic nephrotoxic uh, which can retard gi motility in elderly okay again uh, cns uh, drugs okay drugs which can cause uh, confusion sedation no these all things get exaggerated as person grows old right Uh, drugs which can cause photophobia do not try to give it to elderly because you know elderly people will already have cataracts okay most of them i'm not talking of uh, if they are not treated it might prove to be you know kind of a blinding drug for them so don't try to give them drugs which act on the skin the skin is so fragile okay so drugs which dry the skin or something of that sort don't try to give them because that can irritate the individuals okay uh, anticholinergic drugs as elderly you get especially with men uh so um, drugs which have anticholinergic component and it can bring about problems with voiding so because as you grow old your prostate is going to have benign prostatic hypertrophy most of the males i should say not all uh, but yes it, it's a known fact so uh, voiding problems can occur as a side effect provide can in fact get exaggerated as the person grows old so these all things are uh, you know simple but then it adds to the misery of the individuals so try to look for them 
uh, before prescribing so these are some limitations that a person should look into uh, before prescribing and that becomes an important factor uh, which affects the drug action so if that was on the age the next is on the weight okay so we all know weight of an individual is the identity right uh, i am overweight that's another story but anyway it's the, that, that's the identity of an individual right? how you perceive individual in society so uh, it has to do something with the dose of a drug also right so you have those extremes of uh, weights also you're obese super obese on one side on the other side you have those lean individuals lean trim individuals okay now usually if a person is within that normal range of medium stature normal 60 plus minus 20 on other side is 20 10 15 20 on either side is okay but you're extremely obese okay you're talking or extremely lean or malnourished individual that you know normal doses of a drug can prove to be toxic again there are a lot of formulas which are there by which you can calculate uh, the dose of a drug as per the weight uh, but uh, practically speaking in my practice i hardly use them but as yes, on experimental side if i am doing some clinical trials yes but then I'll, uh, that's another scenario uh, how you come up to the dose of a drug and so on uh, ideally i just look into the dose uh, drug information book let's try to search for uh, you know per kg body weight of a person uh, per kg dose of a per drug sorry and just try to multiply it with the weight of a person and it gets to the formula so that is what gets the final dose that's the commonest thing that uh, usually most of the doctors will be doing it across uh, certain emergency drugs you will already have those displayed the dose in the wards in the clinics in the isus misus operation theaters wherever you go if you are new you might try to search them through drug information booklets pharmacopoeia books and so on so these all things are of course there so try to search them for a new drug of course the pharmaceutical company will try to give you with all their required information on the dose how to divide it how to give it and so on uh, it's kind of business right okay so certain drugs are given also as uh, what i can say a surface area depending upon a surface area they say it's more accurate but at limits to a few cancer drugs uh, anti-cancer drugs a few other drugs but not on a routine basis that we practice as per body surface area so that is uh, about uh, what i can say about uh, the weight of an individual the next comes is the sex of an individual okay sex of individuals females have a smaller body as compared to males uh, usually usually Yes, it's not hard and fast rule but usually they have a smaller body as compared to uh, the female uh, males uh, mentally psych psychologically physically the demands are different right hormonal status are different so drugs which might be of help to males may not be of help to females right if i'm giving um, if uh, uh, estrogen to a male is definitely going to be disaster of uh, disaster uh, forget those usefulness of that drug but just talking in terms of a basic example or if i try to give uh, testosterone or androgens in ample quantities to females that will disrupt uh, the entire feminine issue of the female so there are specific drugs which are specifically meant for specific uh, uh, individuals so that's the diseases okay the diseases of um, the reproductive tract now those are very specific for male versus female so your specific drugs which are meant for those things so you cannot just interchange them now side effect profile right side effect profile certain drugs can cause lots of uh, erectile dysfunction beta blockers uh, loss of libido uh, then can cause gynecomastia in males okay so these all problems relate to males so drugs like etaconazole beta beta blockers and so on a lot of problems with males but as compared to females uh, drugs which can cause problems to the pregnancy so anti acne agents okay some of them are highly teratogenic so need to be careful they may not be that much of a problem in the males so you need to go for a pregnancy pregnancy test before you can opt for uh, tretinoin and so on so these are feminine issues and some are male issues so drugs even get divided and the responses will get divided if you mix and match it will be a disaster now pregnancy even is a big issue as far as females are concerned because a lot of physiological changes go on in the body which can entirely disrupt the kinetics and the dynamics of a drug for example if i talk in terms of pregnancy then what can go i mean what happens physiologically which is important from pharmacological point of view is 
uh, you know uh, the volume of distribution of drugs is going to be more okay the plasma protein binding is going to be less okay uh, simply because it's diluted uh, the, the, the so so free more free drug will be available of course uh, which can cause a lot of problems because that can activate i should say uh, and a free drug is available for action right the git motility is going to go down so absorption of a drug is going to get delayed um, there is going to be induction of hepatic enzymes so even that is a problem right in pregnancy so even these issues can completely uh, derange the way in which normal drugs can act in pregnancy so again as i say pregnancy I take it as a part of sex, but again becomes an important issue while prescribing. Anyway, we will do uh, a session on pregnancy and drugs. That's the time I'll talk more on this. But anyway, you need to be careful. Uh, look at the sex profile. It's not there just for fun. I'm not talking of sex as fun. No, don't take it as that way. No, it's a fun. It's another story, but I'm not mixing that now. I'm just talking of you mentioned the sex as male and female in prescribing. It's it's to deal with the drugs. If you see uh, a drug and then look at the sex, then it becomes more of a meaning to you. And then look at all the side effect profile, kinetic and dynamic changes. Definitely, if a female is receiving some kind of a male hormone, I might look into the charge sheet for what she is receiving, how she is receiving, and so on. So it becomes more of a alarming signal okay on the other hand a male is receiving a female hormone safe and definitely there is a issue all right so these all things do become important as far as drug responses are concerned and this becomes an important factor to us when we are prescribing drugs and that can cause a variation in the drug response the next in the line is about uh, the race of an individual right so race is also an important thing uh, now this may not be for individuals who practice in areas where they get people from the same community same population same gene pool but uh, doctors who are flying doctors or doctors who uh, practice across uh, what I said uh, across uh, the boundaries or who get patients from uh, across the globe now for them it becomes issue because some drugs might be highly effective in certain uh, races whereas some drugs may not be highly effective in certain other things but that all boils down to what kind of genetic pool the person has and that has nothing to do with the outer covering that's the skin right <laughs> okay so so these all things do matter even side effect profile of drugs okay so the certain side effects of a drug might be pronounced in certain races right okay it may not be the same in other things another a uh, few other races look at chloramphenicol we used to use this drug a broad spectrum antibiotic broad spectrum antibiotic uh, and uh, what used to happen is that uh, a few races uh, it has been seen that uh, they suffered from a plastic anemia but if you see some other races, then a plastic anemia was rare to find with chloramphenicol. That's why it was used extensively in those countries. Now, that's the best example, right, of variation in drug response as far as uh, race is concerned. So, that was my quick analysis for the day. I hope you like this session. There are going to be a few more sessions which I will uh, be uh, shooting up uh, when I'll be talking of. Uh, uh, factors which affect drug response do subscribe to my channel keep watching thank you have a nice day bye